I'll be reacting to Stephanie's video called Why You Hate Your Nose, The Damaging Normalization of Nose Jobs. Let's do it. Have you ever felt like your nose is too big, too crooked, too flat, badly shaped? Have you ever... Yeah, you know, some people ask me if I've taken a look at my own nose and the answer is yes. I realize that my nose is strong and I kind of like it. So I know the imperfections of my nose, but I'm okay with it your nose to the beautiful influencers and celebrities that you see in the media and wish that your nose looked more like theirs? I'm okay. Wish it was a little bit straighter, smaller, thinner, neater? You are not the only one. We've all seen the famous nose jobs gone wrong, but what about the sneaky nose jobs that went right that aren't so obvious? It seems that insecurities regarding nose shape and nose size are infiltrating most men and women these days, to the point that even the influencers and celebrities that you see in the media that you- Well, it's not just about the nose. I mean, people have insecurities about various other facial features and aspects of their body, and that's just human nature you know most of us have something that we're insecure about you thought were our natural have in fact had their honkers allegedly tweaked in favor of a more honkers. aesthetically pleasing nose yeah it is good to keep in mind that many of these celebrities do get procedures done and oftentimes rhinoplasty is a, is a common one and many times that has to be revised and they get revision rhinoplasty and very few of them actually talk about it Showing many examples here. And some, you know, get the rhinoplasties done early in life, like before they really get big on the scene. And others wait until they're already fairly successful and then get something adjusted. You may have noticed that in the majority of my videos, my nose is contoured to within an inch of its life. Because my friends, I am extremely insecure about my nose and I have been since I was a literal child. I have been told since I was a child. Whoa, well that's nice of her to share that. I mean, oftentimes people don't talk about this type of stuff, but glad to see another YouTuber sharing how they feel about themselves and specifically how they feel about their face. And some of these comments are pretty terrible. Fix your nose before making these videos. Not nice. Hey Steph, have you ever thought about getting a nose job? You could be so pretty, but your nose is letting you down. It's quite thick and not centered, not judging. Yeah, they are. You see, this is, that's kind of messed up. And you know, oftentimes like I hear that patients or people go to different plastic surgeons and they're basically told or suggested that they should get a surgery done. They're coming in for something else and they're told, oh, let's also add on this procedure. There are some scenarios where I think that is appropriate, uh, such as someone who has a very weak chin and is looking to deep project their nose. In reality, it's because their chin is so recessed that their nose then appears to stick out more. So that's a situation where it's okay to bring up something like that if someone's coming in for concerns about their nose. But if someone's coming in for, I don't know, um, that they're, they feel like their ears stick out and you tell them that, hey, you should also get your nose done at the same time. I think that's kind of inappropriate. YouTube and the people watching these videos really ought to be a little bit more sensitive to the creators because, you know, we're just human beings, people who have sensitivities and you have to be careful, I think, what you say. It's not always appropriate to write these things. That my nose is big, makes me look ugly, it's flat, it's crooked. And honestly, I've believed it. I even went to a doctor a few years ago for something totally unrelated. In fact, I think I wanted to get lip filler. And he stared at me for a long time and then he said, have you ever had your nose broken? And I was like, no. And he was like, well, it looks like you have and I can fix it for you. And I you see, that's what I was actually getting at. That is, in my opinion, an inappropriate way to address a patient who's coming in for lip filler. I was so offended. I remember leaving that appointment, getting back to my car and just bursting into tears because I was like, this professional thinks that my nose is so wonky that it's been broken in the past. And to my knowledge, it hasn't. I was born with this wonky nose, okay? So it seems like she does a lot of contouring um, related to her nose. It looks really good the way she has it there. I'm not really sure what it looks like without the makeup, but as far as I can tell, it looks like a nice nose. Now I know for a fact that it is not just me who feels this insecurity regarding their nose because surgical rhinoplasty, aka a nose job, is the second most popular plastic surgery in America today. And honestly, 
I can bloody tell. It seems like everywhere I look these days, people are undergoing surgery in a bid to erase their natural nose in order to achieve the nose that society tells us we are supposed to have. Well, also keep in mind here that she's referring to cosmetic rhinoplasty, but functional rhinoplasty, and that's when people have trouble breathing through their nose. And um, you can correct some of those breathing problems with the rhinoplasty. Occasionally it's just a septoplasty where you just work on the partition between the two sides of the nose. But a rhinoplasty can offer additional benefit for certain patients who have trouble breathing through their nose. That's about our damn genetics. Never mind our natural bloody bone structure. If you, like me, have felt insecure about your nose since you were a child, you are not the only one. This idea of what a female's nose should look like has been ingrained in our minds since we were children. Yes, yeah, so she's gonna get into how we perceive the nose, it seems. Everyone trying to look the same. Um, I do think that it's important to remember that, you know, we all come from different backgrounds, different ethnicities. And what I like to do in my practice is to preserve the natural identity of the person and just little tweaks, little adjustments, modifications to make it fit better with their face but not turn them into somebody else. Every single one of these characters has the exact same tiny upturned nose. However, juxtapose these Disney princesses with the portrayal of the Disney villains and you'll see that these poor unfortunate women have very differently shaped noses. True. Long, large, bulbous, curved the wrong way, potentially with a bump or hump on the bridge. It's a really good point. Something I haven't thought of in the past, but it's really true. There, There's definitely something to be said for the way that we get programmed from an early age in society. Barbie, she's the same. Tiny, thin, upturned nose. Bright dolls, they're the same. Tiny, thin, upturned nose. Rainbow High, which is super popular today, tiny, thin, upturned nose. And in fact, there are actually some women who have gone as far as getting their faces surgically altered to look like Barbie dolls or Disney princesses when they become adults because- Yeah, I think that's a really disturbing and distorted problem that we have in, in plastic surgery that there are surgeons who are willing to put people under the knife and create something that is far from natural and they're not just trying to optimize that person's looks they're trying to turn them into something else and it's okay for other surgeons out there to just say no to patients who are asking for these types of things they usually need some help beyond plastic surgery they have taken on that idea that this will make them look pretty it is so damaging female noses has been going on for such a long time that you probably haven't even noticed it. Look at the TV show Friends. Rachel Green, the hot one, apparently wasn't so hot before her nose job. In fact, one of the long running jokes in Friends is Rachel's looks before getting her nose done. 90s cult classic Clueless. Half the extras in this movie were sporting bandages on their noses, subliminally promoting the normality of nose jobs. Oh, I don't remember that, but that's interesting. In some parts of the world, I heard, it's almost like a status symbol to walk around with a cast on your nose, which is very bizarre, even if you haven't had plastic surgery, but they just put the cast on and you walk around so that other people think that you've had you know, surgery and you have the money to afford surgery. That's pretty twisted, but I have heard of that. Depending on your genetic makeup, you may physically take after certain members of your ancestry. Is your nose long and curved? Does your nose have a bump? If so, perhaps you have what's known as the Roman nose or aquiline nose. This nose shape has a prominent bridge and may be curved or slightly bent. Nowadays, people with this nose shape make up the majority of people who undergo surgical rhinoplasty. However, in early Europe, the aquiline nose symbolized beauty and nobility. And in fact, for most of history, this particular nose shape was considered the most desirable shape. It's true. You know, social mores change with time and they change based on where you live and across generations. So what's popular now may not be so popular in the future. And if your nose is straight and long, maybe you have what's known as a Greek nose. 
This nose is characterized by its long, sturdy, straight appearance. Maybe you could look back through your ancestry and see if you do in fact have ancestors that originated from or near Greece. Does your nose have a shorter bridge? Do you have large nostrils? If so, then perhaps your nose resembles the Nubian nose. The Nubian nose is often found in people whose ancestors originated from hot countries. I mean, surely, you know, all the features of our faces and our bodies have to do with where we come from. You can also look at hair in a similar way and the texture of the hair. And yeah, these are various adaptations to the environment or to whatever. People whose ancestors lived in hot, humid clients tend to have wider nostrils and a thicker nasal bridge. This made inhaling the thick, hot air from these climates easier. Now on the flip side, if you have a- I think there may be some truth to some of what she's saying here, but I don't think it's fully substantiated. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're able to bring in more air through your nose. And what oftentimes uh, goes along with wider, flatter noses is a weaker nasal tip. As your nasal tip is weaker and is brought in closer to the face, there's actually less support and the, the external nasal valve is not as open. And because of that, you get less airflow through your nose. Long, narrow, thin nose with small nostrils, there is a high chance that your ancestors came from cold climates. Cold air is actually really irritating to the sinuses. And as such, people from these climates evolved to have smaller nostrils and smaller nasal bridges in order to control the amount. Yeah, so this isn't completely true. And just because you're nose looks smaller doesn't mean that it's getting any less airflow than a nose that looks wider. Does she have like a reference that she cites here? It'd be nice. I don't know. We'll have to check the description. When we bring up a lot of the more scientific things, um, we like to have references. There is so much more to your nose than looking like a bloody brat doll. Let's take a look at Emily Ratajkowski. She is a super successful model and influencer with millions upon millions of followers on Instagram. And anybody with eyes can see that she is absolutely beautiful to look at. If if you were to put Emily through a filter of today's beauty standards, this is what her nose would look like. However, that is not Emily's nose. That is not what she looks like. This is Emily's nose. And as you can see, hmm. it is longer than the famed celestial nose. It's not upturned. She doesn't have barbie nostrils and it isn't perfectly straight. It tilts to the right. I think what it comes down to is just um, people feeling comfortable in their own shoes, you know? So if somebody feels good about themselves and overall has a good self-esteem, then they probably don't have to change too much. However, nose jobs or trying to alter the look of your nose in some way has been going on for centuries. Back in Germany a few hundred years ago, entrepreneur and marketing specialist Leo Maximilian Baginski created this horrifying, <laughs> what? Looking contraption known as the Nasenformer Zello. This machine would be strapped to your face and over a period of time would mold and change your nose cartilage to a more desired shape. Wow, imagine like wearing this thing throughout the day. That's, that's crazy. I would imagine that it would work better when people are younger in like an adult form, it's going to be hard to really change a lot. And I can't imagine walking around with this contraption on your face. That sounds bizarre. To be fair, that actually seems less brutal than today's surgical nose jobs. Now I'm going to leave this video here with my little personal opinion about my nose and why I refuse to undergo surgical rhinoplasty in order to make my nose prettier. To be fair, I can breathe extremely well through my nose. Yes, I have a thicker bridge and I have thicker nostrils, which I guess hark back to my ancestors, but I can breathe really, really, really well. I have also been whacked in the face numerous times by really heavy balls and my nose has never once broken. I can smell really well. And when I have a cold, I can eject so much snot. It's amazing. Oh gosh. Oh. No, I am not going to surgically alter my nose. Yes. I also keep in mind that for patients who are doing well functionally, like Stephanie says she is, uh, most of the time cosmetic rhinoplasty doesn't make breathing worse or all of these different uh, aspects that she's talking about. I probably will continue to contour it because I'm really, really good at it and I like the way it looks. But the good thing about makeup is I can wash it off at the end of the day or some days I can just simply choose not to contour my nose at all. Yeah, that's true. You know, surgery is more permanent and you can't necessarily undo a surgery completely. But there, of course, are revision procedures that can be done to improve a situation if someone's unhappy with either their cosmetic result 
or if functionally they then have an impairment after the original rhinoplasty surgery. Steph, I really don't care what you say. I'm still gonna go out and book myself a nose job. All power to you. It is your nose and your face and you can do whatever you want with it. Don't let me tell you otherwise and don't let anyone else tell you ever what to do with your face. Make sure you do your due diligence, research your surgeon extremely well and make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Okay, love you guys, bye. Great messages overall. Stephanie, thank you for making this video, sharing you know all these negative things that people have said about you and about your nose and for just disregarding that it's a great message you know people ought to have the freedom to choose whether to do a plastic surgery or just do without it and both ways are fine and if you decide to get surgery know the risks know the potential downsides and side effects and know who you're going to and who's going to be doing your surgery don't just go by the person with the most uh, followers or subscribers or the most media attention Go with someone who you feel you can trust and who has a solid plan for you. Since you enjoyed this reaction video, please make sure to check out our video on Surgeon Reacts to My $19,000 Nose Job Wasn't Worth It.